All right, so as promised, here is the 80 mile per hour test for the efficiency on the Model Y. We're gonna go 64 miles again. We're going northbound 32 miles and then southbound 32 miles. The wind is still the same as it was in the last test. So obviously it's gonna be uh, calm, but it was one mile per hour south, southwest. And we also have the tires nice and warmed up and we are going to um, have the same temperature. Again, this is back-to-back -back test, so it's going to be as close as possible to that test. So I think it's going to be overall a fair comparison. Hopefully, I will be able to stay with 80 miles per hour. That is actually a little bit fast. Uh, it's faster than I would normally travel, and uh, it could be that traffic gets in our way a little bit. So again, I'm going to try as best as I can to stick with that 80 miles per hour, but it is possible that we're going to end up averaging a little bit less than 80 miles per hour. But overall, that is uh, the plan for this test. So I'm going to get out on the road and reset the trip meter. Right now, I already have it set for uh, label north 80 miles per hour, and I will go ahead and get that started, and we'll get this test underway. surprise looks like we're going to be much less efficient here at 80 miles per hour looking close to 280 miles per mile i mean that's a uh, 41 hours per mile worse than what we did at 70 miles per hour so a significant decrease in efficiency and do the southbound loop or the southbound leg of the loop to complete out this 80 mile per hour test again it is difficult to stay at 80 miles per hour with all the traffic uh, so if anything we are probably going to average a few miles per hour less than 80 miles per hour but it's about the best i could do without there being basically no traffic so uh, we've been pretty good about it overall. Unfortunately, the traffic was pretty bad there for a while and it was not possible to go 80 miles per hour consistently I would say that we did a good 25 miles of the uh, 32 miles uh, at 80 miles per hour but like I said I mean this last last few miles here has been pretty difficult and as you can see right now because we're trying to get to our exit here uh, we're slowing down to 70 so not not the full 80 miles per hour the whole time which unfortunately means this test is a little bit less accurate but it still does give us a very good uh, indication that obviously it's less efficient so 32 miles 296 watt hours per mile 296 watt hours per mile so <laughs> As expected, each uh, 10 mile per hour increment you go faster. Obviously, it is much less efficient when traveling at steady state. So it was really, like I said, really difficult to stay up with that consistent 80 miles per hour uh, because of all the traffic. So, you know, we'll do future tests and see if we get a, a better indication of the differences at the different speeds. We do have the results today and so i wanted to go through it real quick 
Uh, but before I do, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you uh, like these efficiency tests and leave comments down below if you'd like to see different tests or if you have any questions about this test. And let's get started. So we got all the numbers in for the 80 mile per hour test and no surprise, uh, pretty bad efficiency going 80 miles per hour. Obviously it's not gonna be anywhere near EPA range at 80 miles per hour, but I do have the chart here. So we'll just run through it again. If you haven't watched the 60 mile per hour test and 70 mile per hour test, please feel free to go and check those out. I will have a link uh, to this as well as I will set it up as a playlist so you can make sure that you don't miss those. Um, but I will cover all the results in this one. So you don't need to go back and, and watch those tests if you don't want to. So here we are for the 80 mile per hour tests. Um, I'm just gonna briefly go over uh, the 60 and 70 mile per hour test where we saw that the 60 mile per hour test was close to the EPA range of 326 miles. 70 mile per hour test, 284 miles or so. And at 80 miles per hour, we would have gotten 250 or just over 250 miles on a full charge uh, going 80 miles per hour uh, constant speed at uh, 53 to 56 degrees is what the temperature was for that test. So you can see I have a chart here where it uh, shows the full range at 100% going 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, and then 80 miles per hour a nice uh, slope there downward uh, for efficiency. Obviously, it's less efficient the faster you go. Um, but it was interesting to me that it, it looks like, at least if you compare the 60 mile per hour test to the 70 mile per hour test, the gap between going north and south in the watt hours per mile efficiency is very large it was 55 watt hours per mile gap between north and south and so that is basically uh, going slightly downhill to slightly uphill overall that's why we do that loop but you can see there's a large difference there 60 miles per hour but then the difference in efficiency between uh, going uphill and downhill or downhill and then uphill uh, north and south is only 27 wires per mile difference on the 70 mile per hour test and then here again on the 80 mile per hour test only it's only 13 watt hours per mile difference between going north and south so between going slightly downhill and slightly uphill so you can see that the the faster you go the the more impact to the overall efficiency that the speed has so the speed is much more impactful than any of the other variables at that uh, at that time. So even though we were going slightly downhill on the northbound trip and then slightly uphill on the southbound trip, it's almost getting to the point where there's no difference in uh, the elevation uh, impacting the efficiency. It's almost all about that 80 mile per hour speed which is, again, pretty expected because 80 miles per hour, that's pretty fast. And you should definitely not expect to get EPA range at 80 miles per hour in any car. I mean, you definitely wouldn't get that in the Prius that we used to have, and you definitely wouldn't get that in, or shouldn't expect that to get it in any car. If you have a vehicle, gas powered or otherwise, that can get EPA rated efficiency at 70 miles plus, then that is amazing. Because usually it's around 60 miles per hour is where you get that, that close to EPA range. So that bears out in our testing here with the Model Y. So again, I'll just go through the uh, details of what we actually used for this test. So it was 53 to 56 degrees and it had 29.83 barometric pressure, 41 dew point. Again, I don't think the dew point has anything to do with anything. Humidity 65%. Uh, the tire pressures were, you know, 44. So when warm, uh, at, at that temperature, when the tires are warm after they, we had ridden, uh, 
Well, after I had gone 64 miles on the first uh, loop, it still was 44. So 44 is the warm temperature for the tires, or the warm pressure for the uh, tires. The wind was still calm. And I went ahead and added these things that I didn't put in there before, but we definitely want to keep track of them. So for the cabin climate, I did put it on 70 degrees auto. Now in the Model Y, it does have the feature uh, to shut off the passenger AC when you are not uh, using it. So if you don't have anybody in the passenger seat, it automatically turns off that uh, climate for that passenger so it turns off the fan for the passenger so it's not using any energy for that so it's directing all of the uh t the cabin uh climate control to just the driver so that's actually good for efficiency that wasn't an update recently that should help it win out efficiency wise for um, at least climate control on the model y again on an 80 mile per hour test this is basically nothing and 70 miles or 70 degrees in the cabin was just a comfortable temperature not a big deal um so it definitely wasn't working hard to keep the cabin at 70 degrees and i didn't have the seat heater on or the lights were not on so the lights might actually be something that takes a little bit more efficiency away or takes a little more energy on the uh, trip so definitely when i do Probably I'll do a colder climate, uh, colder temperature test with uh, 70 miles per hour possibly. And likely it's going to be at night because, uh, well, it doesn't get very cold in Georgia, but uh, definitely overnight it could get into freezing temperatures. So I would be interested to see at, say, 30 degrees uh, what kind of efficiency we would get at 70 miles per hour. So definitely going to check that out if I can. And uh, the lights will be on for that test as well. So definitely going to take some more energy uh, for the lights. Again, they are, they're LED, so they shouldn't be taking too much, uh, too much of the efficiency, but definitely factor. So I'm going to keep those on there for future tests and end up making hopefully a nice big chart. So... Uh, overall, I was, uh, you know, I, I wasn't uh, expecting it to be very good efficiency, but, uh, you know, 250 miles, I mean, versus the 326 rated range would definitely be a lot less for the Model Y than, uh, you know, you'd want to get. So I definitely think 70 miles per hour is a good, happy medium. Uh, 60 miles per hour is very slow, obviously, and 80 miles per hour is... A little fast for you know for my taste but of course you know if you need to go fast and that's uh how you're doing it then fine 250 uh miles is what you'd expect to get at 53 to 56 degrees i do think the temperature had a big impact on that and i do think we would get closer to the epa range at 70 miles per hour if it was say 75 80 degrees out uh nice uh nice day and the, the ac's not running too too much and uh the battery is a nice you know temperature i think around 70 degrees is optimal for the battery so overall uh i think it was a good test and it shows the different efficiencies between 60 70 miles per hour 60 70 and 80 miles per hour in the model y so we will plan on doing this test again for the model 3 and see the differences in that and as always thanks so much for watching we'll see you on the next one